Hey folks, Martin here from Mobility Direct. Hope you're well. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the new ultralight scooter from Pride Mobility, the Pride Apex Illumilite. So to begin with, this model is based on the older Pride Apex light scooter, which would be considered, I suppose, an entry-level uh, four-wheel travel scooter. They've taken that model and essentially redesigned it to make it lighter. Uh, they changed the battery from lead acid to lithium, they have changed the frame, which is kind of the main body or section of the scooter, uh, to aluminium, and they've also redesigned the seat. Again, all just to make it lighter. Overall, it's over 30% lighter than the original version. Okay, so the main difference in weight stems from the change in battery from lead acid to lithium. Generally speaking, lithium batteries are much, much lighter than uh, lead acid batteries. In this case, there's a 70% difference in weight, which is a huge, huge difference. So the lead acid batteries on the Apex Lite, uh, for the standard size, weighed 8.8 kilograms, and on the Illum Lite, and with the lithium battery, they only weigh 2.5 kilograms. So as I said, it's a 70% difference. You know, that is a noticeable difference. You know, if it's a case that you're going to be transporting the scooter on a regular basis, lifting it out of the car, then, you know, that kind of weight saving is going to be really, really noticeable. Generally speaking, the batteries tend to be the, one of the heaviest parts of the scooter when, the, when they're disassembled. So it's a big, big difference, a big saving in weight. Not only is it a lot lighter, but you can actually travel a lot further on it. One of the, I suppose, limitations, if you like, with the older Apex Lite model is that you can only do maybe five to eight kilometers on a full charge, which, you know, for a lot of people wouldn't be enough. Uh, on this one, you can do up to 16 to 19 kilometers on a full charge. So it's a big difference there again. So not only is it a lot lighter, but you can actually, you can actually travel up to two and a half times the distance. So it's a win-win situation there. Okay, so it's not just the battery that they've changed, they've actually redesigned the frame. Now, as I mentioned, the frame is this main section here, it's the main body of the scooter. Typically, it's one of the heaviest pieces. It's usually like the second heaviest piece when you disassemble a mobility scooter. On the old Apex Lite, it weighed 15 kilograms, and on this one, it weighs just over 11 kilograms. So it's a weight saving of about 25%, which is noticeable. You know, if you're gonna be transporting the scooter, as I said, on a regular basis, you know, you're gonna notice it. It's gonna make things a lot easier. They've also redesigned the seat. So it's the same style of seat in a lot of ways, but they just brought the, brought the weight down. Um, weighs 10.4 on the Apex Lite, and this one weighs 8.5, so it's a weight saving of about 20%. So between the two there, it's going to make things a lot easier, especially when you're transporting the scooter. Okay, so in terms of operating the scooter, it works exactly like um, the older Apex Lite model and very similar to most um, small scooters from Pride. So the first thing you want to do is obviously get into the scooter. Now, most scooters from Pride will have the swivel function. So usually there's a lever, usually on the right-hand side of the seat. That lever can be lifted up and you can turn the seat any, any way you like. And you just want to turn it out to where you're, where you're standing. And it just makes getting in and out much easier and safer. So you can sit in like this, hold on to the handlebar, and turn yourself around and it just clicks into place like so. Okay, so for the next part, you wanna turn the scooter on and we do that by turning the key here uh, on the front to the right. You turn the key to the right, the scooter is now on. You know the scooter is on because there's a battery light indicator that lights up once the scooter is on. So again, turn it off, turn to the left, scooter is off. Turn to the right, battery light lights up, you know the scooter is on. Just on the key, if you are going to leave the scooter unattended, like let's say outside a, a shopping centre for example, we would recommend removing the key. So you can just turn the key to the left and take it out. And we'd recommend doing this if you are going to leave it unattended, just for, for safety's sake. So again, you turn to the right to turn it on, you know that it's on because the battery light indicator um, is lit up. So to drive the scooter forward, uh, we have a lever here under the handlebar. So we usually put our hand on uh, the handlebar section and then we use our thumb to press and hold the lever in. And when we do that, the scooter drives forward. To reverse, we just use the, the left-hand side. When we want to stop, we just let go. So once you let go of the lever, uh, the brake is applied automatically. So you don't have to press on your brake or look for any brake. Once you let go of the lever, the brake applies automatically and the, the scooter comes to a standstill. To control the speed, you have a knob here to the left of uh, the left of the key. At the moment, I have it down right down to the left, which is down to the slowest. So this, this is the slowest it goes. Okay, and then if I wanted to pass outside, for example, I could turn the speed over, turn the knob to the right, and that would increase the speed. Uh, just to say, like most small scooters, the top speed is four miles an hour or 6.4 kilometers per hour. So if you think of a fast walking pace, that's the quickest it can go. When it comes to charging, we recommend charging the scooter at least once a week. If you are using the scooter on, say, a daily basis, we'd recommend charging every day uh, or every uh, every second day. Um, usually what we recommend doing is charging overnight. That's usually the easiest way to go about it. Um, typically, it takes about eight hours to 
free charge the batteries and so doing this overnight is kind of the easiest and the handiest way to go about it and um, it's perfectly safe to leave the charger plugged in you know once the charger has finished its its charging process uh, the charger will switch off there's no there's no issue with leaving it plugged in uh, overnight um, so to charge the scooter you have a little you have a little lead here so it plugs into a standard uh, standard three pin electricity socket in your home and then you also have the other side which will plug directly into either the uh, scooter there you can plug it directly in like so or what you can do is that you can also take the battery out take the battery out and charge it separately in here so that's one of the nice things about the small scooter is that you can have say the scooter in say a shed or you know the back of a car the back of a car and you can bring the um you can bring the the battery pack in to charge separately it's one of the nice features with the small scooters typically you don't have that option with the larger scooters So when it comes to negatives, there aren't really too many to mention at your answer, it's a really, really good scooter. Now price-wise, it is a lot more expensive than say the um, older Apex Lite, the lead acid version, but it's also a lot, lot lighter. So what I'd say to you is if weight is a huge uh, factor for you, then I would uh, strongly recommend consider this one. If on the other hand you can manage the weight of say the other, other scooters, the Apex Lite or something similar, then there isn't really much point in considering this one as essentially you'd be paying a premium for nothing. Uh, but weight wise, it is one of the best on the market uh, at the moment. So if you're gonna be transporting the scooter on a regular basis uh, and you struggle with the weight of some of the other models, then this is definitely one worth considering. The other thing I, I point out as well that the batteries are more expensive to replace. You know, lithium is still a, you know it's a newish technology you know so over time the, you know, the price more than likely will come down but at the moment it is more expensive but on the other side they also last longer than lead acid so over the over the life of the scooter is probably not going to make much of a difference but it's just something to make you aware of the other thing as well i point out and i'm probably nitpicking here a little bit is just the seat so as i mentioned earlier they did redesign the seat and um, to make it lighter and um, but they've changed the they changed the padding or reduced some of the padding in the seat so it's not as comfortable as some of the other um, similar models I don't think it's going to be much of a factor uh, for most people, you know, but if, for example, you have a lot of back trouble or if comfort is a really important factor for you, then it's something just to think about. You know, so as always, we always recommend, you know, trying out different uh, models and seeing which, which works best for you. Um, so if you'd like to try it out, we have them available in our showroom. You can test drive them. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, please get in touch or contact each other below. And if you like these kind of videos, please hit subscribe and I'll see you again. All the best.